A legislative provision passed by the U.S. Senate will bring India at par with America's NATO allies for increased defense cooperation. The proposal, which was passed by the U.S. Senate last week, was part of the National Defense Authorization Act, or the NDAA, for the fiscal year 2020. It is yet to be passed by the House of Representatives, which is scheduled to consider it this month. Now, the amendment provides for increased U.S.-India defense cooperation in the Indian Ocean, especially in areas of humanitarian assistance, counterterrorism, counter privacy, and maritime security. To sum it up, it seeks to expand the scope of India's designation as a major defense partner of the United States. A wall collapsed in Maharashtra, one of India's richest states, uh, leaving 28 people dead in just one day. The wall collapse in Malad in northern Mumbai left uh, 18 people dead and further injured 13 people. The heavy downpour triggered the collapse of a wall. Uh, many people are still believed to be trapped under the debris. The National Disaster Response Force has been called in to assist uh, with the rescue operations. The injured have been admitted to the trauma center at Jogeshwari and Shatabdi Hospital. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis visited the hospital and met with the patients and their family members. Remember, the Maharashtra government is facing a lot of flack over the way in which they've handled the crisis so far. Another wall collapse in Pune's Singhard College has claimed the lives of six people. The incident happened around 1.15 a.m. this morning. This follows another wall collapse last week in Pune's Kodwa that claimed the lives of 17 people. The series of bad news incidents continuing for Maharashtra as another wall collapsed in Kalyan. The wall of an Urdu school collapsed or, uh, in an adjoining room, killing three people and injuring another. Across Maharashtra, 28 people, I repeat, 28 people have lost their lives due to wall collapses in just one day. Four teams of the National Disaster Relief Force have been shifted from Pune to Mumbai to handle the multiple crises. Meanwhile, the Maharashtra government has issued an advisory asking people to stay indoors. The spotlight is also on the quality of construction in structures across the state. The incessant downpour in Mumbai has many people worried and for all who are old enough to remember, there is horrifying deja vu in what is happening right now. It's a story every year. Let's take you back to the 26th of July 2005. Mumbai was lashed by heavy downpour for a couple of days, 944 millimeters. That's how much rain Mumbai received in just 24 hours. To put that into perspective, this is more than 3,500 tons of water per acre. What followed were a few days when Mumbai literally came to a standstill. The situation has not turned as bad for Mumbai so far. Over the last 24 hours, Mumbai has received 375.2 millimeters of rain, but the forecasts do not look, look so good. There are some worrying similarities between 2005 and the present situation. One of the most affected infrastructures in the 2005 rainfall was uh, the local train network. As many as 52 trains were affected, and even now reports are coming in of dozens of train services being suspended. Traffic also uh, being affected, of course, in 2005 with water logging in for more than 30 hours in 2005, and a staggering 700 flights were cancelled. Fast forward to 2019, and more than 118 flights have been affected so far, out of which 42 have outrightly been cancelled. Now, this comparison brings to light Mumbai's stunted approach to tackling incessant rains, outdated drainage systems, unchecked urban growth and depletion of tree cover. These were the reasons cited in 2005 and they hold true even today. Mumbai's drainage systems have been opened.